Praise the Lord. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. For God is great and greatly to be praised is his name. Amen and amen. Well, another day, another weekend, and so time just keeps rolling. I mean, it feels like just yesterday we, you know, put away all the decorations for Christmas, and uh, now we're approaching uh, Mother's Day, and then it's Father's Day, and July the 4th, and before you know, it is Thanksgiving. All right, let's get right into some of these things. For years, I used to battle in getting into God's will for my life. And I used to beat myself up. Perhaps I need to do this or I need to do that. And uh, then I will uh, look at different teachings. And, uh, you know, the basic thing was you need to be in God's will. So what is God's will for my life? How do I tap into God's will? I'm going to give you great revelation. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Hey, God bless you, Angie. God bless you. And it says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. There's such a revelation right here. And I used to think, Knowledge, I need to learn more scripture, learn more, learn more scripture. Actually, that is not what it really means. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. What it means is I need, and I'm going to bring it up on your screen. I need, and let me just change the color here of this, then it will stand out more. How about doing that? Hopefully that will work. Let me see. Let me just make a different kind of color there. Okay, just bear with me, please. There we go. Maybe that will work and put that in white. There we go. Let's see if that will work. There we go. Revelation. Revelation. Let me just put it a little bit smaller. Okay. The revelation of God's word is the true knowledge of principles. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. I used to think to myself, how can I not but study the word, rehearse scriptures, but I actually missed it. It's good, study the word. Yes, it's good. Uh, be aware of scriptures, absolutely. But when it comes to God's will, it's not just the Logos, the written word. It's the Rhema word, the revelation of Scripture. Somebody say a revelation. <laughs> okay. Now, what is the revelation of Scripture? Jesus puts it this way, that... Man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Interesting. He quoted scripture, but with the scripture, he says, there's got to be a proceeding word, an ongoing revelation of scripture. Now, the Pharisees, Jesus pointed out, says, you've got all this knowledge. See, knowledge can puff up. We had to learn 50 scriptures for our exam those years uh, on faith. And we used to use little cards, you know, and then you rehearse it and with the address of the scripture at the back and in the front, the little scripture, and, and you pull it out and then you kind of meditate on it, rehearse it and memorize it and so forth. But the revelation of scripture See, I can puff myself up with a lot of knowledge. But here's the key to get into God's will. The revelation, watch now. The revelation of the word is the principles. 
the principle that we must learn from that scripture and look for a Bible story of some of the Bible characters, our former uh, forefathers or brothers and sisters, and we learn from scripture the principle that comes by revelation in understanding what does that mean and apply it to a story in the Bible. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm thinking, and I'm not, I'm thinking of a change or to cross over to another geographical location or another job or another function, etc. So now I have all these thoughts, but it's not necessary God's will because it can be my own personal thoughts. Maybe I'm dissatisfied with my satisfaction and I'm thinking perhaps it's time for me just to make some changes. So you pr I pray and I think God, it's God's will, but it's not. But now I read scripture and it says, Jesus told his disciples, get into the boat. Let's cross over to the other side. And bam, just like that, you know, just like that. <laughs> and the revelation is there. You need to cross over. There might be some storms. Get into the boat, into the will of God, the boat of obedience, the boat of your instruction and cross over and cross over and that jumps off the page and my spirit begins to be all excited that's the revelation you see and the revelation of scripture becomes God's will for our lives like Jesus said not my will be done but your will be done. And he had to pray about it. He had to pray about it. So the will of God is something that is revealed. The will of God is something that is revealed. I'll give you an example. The question is, what should I do? What should I not be doing? Let's look at a practical Bible example today. Uh, Noah, there's been no rain on the earth. Noah never thought of building a big boat, a three-story cruise liner. No, <laughs> Noah's Ark. <laughs> I just have this wild imagination and I love the Word of God and I allow my imaginations to take me in different realms with the Word and so forth. Okay, uh, so... God says, I want you to build an ark. God revealed God's plan to Noah, and Noah did not sit in, you know, uh, think, well, maybe I should do this or that. God revealed God's plan. What about Joseph? Joseph didn't dream up what I'm going to do for God. God revealed God his purpose through a dream. Now he had a dream. God called Moses. How? He was walking in the desert and the bush started to burn and God's voice came out of the bush. Take off your sandals, Moses. The ground you are standing on, they are holy. God revealed to Moses, I'm going to send you to Israel. And you're going to deliver them from Egyptian taskmasters bondage. God revealed God's will. Before I close, it's just a short kind of broadcast. Now, a lack of Bible knowledge. I'm talking about the principle of 
the revelation of that scripture. There's a principle. There's a principle we have to learn. We can read the story about Noah swallowed by uh, a big whale. And, uh, but what is the principle? Not to be swallowed by a storm or to be cast into a storm. What is the principle? What is the revelation? Well, uh, uh, he got the word, right? He got the word from uh, the Lord, uh, Jonah. Did I say Jonah? And, um, and the word was, go to Nineveh and speak to them th these words. And he thought, no, I'm going to buy a ticket, sail to another place. God is not going to be there to remind me. But we, the principle is, God's voice goes with us and disobedience goes with us no matter where we go because he is inside of us and his word is on the inside of us. And so Jonah ran away from God. God permitted a storm to come. And so the lot eventually fell onto Jonah. He tried to sleep away disobedience. Sleep, uh, or shall I say, he tried to sleep away obedience by going down to the bottom of the ship and sleeping whilst others are battling with a storm that he created. So now I'm learning a principle. When God speaks to me, all I need to do is obey his instruction. If I run away from a word that comes from the Bible, a scripture that shows me what I'm supposed to be doing. Now I understood it and it's a revelation. It's not just knowing another scripture. It has, I'm developing a personal relationship with that scripture, which is really the word of God, which is really God. God is his word. If I disobey his word, I'm disobeying God. Okay. Now I learn, if I just run away from obedience, I don't like this because they too set on wanting to do things according to God's will. I'll just go somewhere else. They kind of, you know, uh, things are far better there. And uh, let me just go there because nobody will be on my case to obey and blah, blah, blah. Well, you're just taking your disobedience with you to another place. And that is what Jonah did. And so you just, uh, 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 you know, working up a storm like Jonah. And unfortunately, you cannot even sleep away disobedience. <laughs> and think that God is going to forget about it. And so a storm comes up. And that's what Deuteronomy 8 verse 2 that I want to elaborate and close with that, okay? In Deuteronomy 8 verse 2, God now brought the Israelites out of Egypt. They now go into the promised land. But before your promised land, there is a desert. There's a desert. Why must I experience challenges or some hardship? God wants to reveal to you what is happening in your heart. When something doesn't go your way, what's going to come out of your mouth? What's going to come out of your actions? Are you going to get mad with God and show him the first? You know? <laughs> I used to wrestle with God a lot. I mean... You talk about Jacob wrestling. I wrestled with God. And, you know, I used to think, let me just line up a lot of scriptures and I'm going to box God and get him into a corner because I'm going to legalize this conversation with scripture. And since he is his word, well, guess who always won? God. <laughs> I could not even use scripture to corner God. It's the revelation of scripture. Otherwise, I'm just like a Pharisee learning head knowledge. They, they used to wear the little flattery boxes. Uh, I know this is an eraser, but they used to wear a little flattery box uh, known today as 
uh, the bread of uh, what a daily bread. You take a little cart out and what have you. And uh, uh, so they had head knowledge, but they they had no personal uh, revelation in a lifestyle with Jesus. Okay, back here to uh, Deuteronomy eight. So they on their way to the promised land, but there was a pit stop, desert. The first thing God did with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, after he was baptized, the Spirit led him to the desert. See, we all go through a desert experience. We all go through a desert experience. And in that desert, our heart, which is it's not your physical heart. No, 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 no. The heart in the spirit is made up of your will, your emotions, your thoughts, your reasoning, your attitude. That forms the heart of man in the spirit. That's how David was a, a man after God's own heart, even though he made mistakes. He was quick to repent. And if he was not quick, God will give him some grace in a sense of, I'm just going to delay this thing, see what you do, see what you do. And then, bam, I'll send this uh, prophet to you and he will just correct you very politely. Now, in Deuteronomy 8 verse 2, they're on their way to the promised land, but they had to go through a desert. How about me just reading it and let's close with that, okay? Uh, actually, you know, uh, I can talk about this topic for about three, four hours, but we're not going to do that. We're going to close right now. Uh, Deuteronomy 8. Let's just go there. I'm turning there as well, if you don't mind. It says there in uh, verse 1, I'm just, uh, you know, quoting the last part. Go in and possess the land. God says to you, go in and possess the land. Okay. And you, in verse 2, Deuteronomy 8 verse 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God let you all this all the way these 40 years in the wilderness, the desert, to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So God humbled them. You can read that there in verse 3 further onwards. God humbled them. How? Cause them to get hungry or run out of water. Will you trust me that I can give you water? Or are we going to murmur, complain, and speak out against God's leader and uh, blah, blah, blah? Uh, so God is more interested in your spiritual heart, what's happening in your mind. See? When something goes wrong. And if you can show God stability, consistency, and you can show God that you can, that God can trust you. That God can trust you. How can God trust you that you will be committed? Even though that you, ah! <laughs> you just keep coming back and say, I'm sorry, Lord, I threw a tantrum there, but, but you're quick to repent, quick to readjust your attitude and so forth. That is how you will get into God's will. Pass the tests. And it's not just getting a lot of scriptures into you and trying to remember all the scriptures. That's great. Okay? But the revelation, the rhema word of scripture will establish the will of God in your life. And the reason a lot of precious children of God uh, 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 grow lukewarm is they do not know the principles of Scripture. I ask, uh, uh, I, I did say I'm going to close, but this is it. I, 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 uh, on Wednesday, I asked a little boy, I said, so uh, what do you think uh, about David and Goliath? What do you think? Well, I posed that question to some people and I turned to that that little uh, boy you know what came from their uh, table where they were sitting 
it shows you the power of God. See, there's a principle. David, Goliath. What is the principle there? The principle is there's not one Goliath bigger than God's power. No matter how small you feel, no matter how inadequate you might feel, whatever you have, I come against that Goliath, David said, in the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I trust you got something. And if you were blessed, you know what I'm going to do. Yes, there it's coming. And sow a seed into this ministry. And for those of you who do, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're helping us. And uh, uh, make out your check to AIM, Box 485. It's all there on the screen. You know, i rather talk more about the word than finances. Uh, however, you know that finances are necessary. And uh, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Go out there. Share this word with somebody. Put it on somebody's wall. Be a good kind of uh, kingdom distributor for God. Go and distribute this word today and help somebody. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Bye now.